Hello there guys, really sorry about not being around. I really do want to get dedicate more time to the channel. So before we begin, I want to thank everyone who's been subscribing, everyone who leaves comments, and the general interaction to the channel has been very great and it's helped a lot, and I really want to thank you guys. Now as the first video of 2020, we continue with the second part of this debunk series. Links to Jar's videos will be in the description box down below. I'm gonna try this a little bit differently than usual and just respond to his points for the most part while using minimal clips. Also, since I had to re-record and remake this entire video from scratch, I know that Jar came out with a, another video in this series recently, but to keep this video valid, I haven't watched it, and I won't until this video is released to you guys. That said, let's get going. Now, Jar, if you're watching this, you can consider this video to be aimed at you. As a fan of your content, I'm happy to help you with the research. Let's go over this together. So, for a quick summary, a few months ago, in the last decade, I made a debunk of Goku vs Superman All Versions, Part 3 by Just a Robot. In this video, I'll be responding to Part 4, and his comment response video, aptly named Part 5. A link to my debunk of Part 3 will be in the description box down below. To summarize, we've gotten to the Golden Age version of Superman, otherwise known as Earth 2 Superman, and Super Saiyan God Goku from the Battle of God Saga in the anime. Those are the two versions he's decided of the current standard, and as such, the ones I'm going to use going forward. Now, my first big issue with this video is that he basically says Battle God's Goku could one-shot several of the main versions of Big Blue. The Rebirth Superman, God of Steel Superman, and Superman 1 Million are just amped up versions of Superman we have already used, but their power boost aren't great enough to make any real difference against the fight with Super Saiyan God Goku. So I have several problems with this scaling for SSJ G Goku. For one, the God form being universal is debatable. Goku's punches were going to destroy the universe, except they weren't. The thing that was going to destroy the universe was the shock waves produced by his punches, which, opposite to real life, got stronger the further they got from the source. So while the shock waves would have eventually destroyed the universe, Goku's punches would have been massively weaker since they're the point of origin. So even if you say those versions of Superman are only universal, he would still have the advantage over Goku. Naturally, Goku does have other feats that can be scaled to universal, as well as a statement that he is an SSJ, and that he's equal to the strength of Battle of Gods, SSJ, God, Goku. But strength is not the only factor in this fight. And I'm also just pointing out that he could be scaled much lower. And it's really something that should have been brought up or at least debunked. But since he didn't, I'm the one doing the debunking here. For Kid Who Comes Superman, I think he's really remarkable. Because you can wink Jay Garrick's statement of saying he's as fast as Wally. Now, I don't want my fellow Flash fans to crucify me, so I will specify that while Jay does not know Wally's top speed, his sentiment that Kingdom Come Superman is even comparable to Wally would mean that he's naturally faster than Jay, which would make him faster than post-Crisis Superman. That kind of speed alone, Goku's not touching him. His advantage over his New Earth counterpart is insane. In fact, I'll let someone else take it away to explain why the massive speed difference between Goku and Superman completely makes this a wash in Superman's favor. It's ridiculously faster to the point where Goku has no hope of ever actually hitting him. Even the speed scaling I presented for Superman already is a horrendous downplay, as throughout his numerous appearances, Superman has demonstrated enough speed to travel backwards in time. So even if we were generous and gave Goku his bogus speed scaling to hits time skip or other feats, he would still be slower. Moving in zero time is impressive, but Superman moves in negative seconds in a rise before he even left. Now, I don't think Superman is measurable. But I do think that a huge point in this debate that often gets lost is speed. There are a few versions of Superman, though, that I would say have a measurable speed, such as Silver Age Superman, who infamously broke the balance of infinity and was able to cross every barrier to the point where the Spectre had to step in to stop him. Also, I will mention that I placed Pre-Crisis Superman above his post and Golden Age counterparts, unlike Jar and a lot of the Versus community, apparently. He has consistently higher-end feats, whereas Golden Age scaled to him from one fight that they had, where he was in his prime, and he showcases much weaker feats later on when he was older, such as his inferiority to Superboy Prime, who for all intents and purposes is just a Silver Age Kryptonian in modern continuity. Next, I want to point out that God of Strength Superman, not God of Steel, as you often called him in this video, is much stronger than his New 52 counterpart. He was able to draw blood from the Anti-Monitor after he became Mobius, and it's been stated during that story that he was going to destroy all of creation. Making this up among other powers, to rewrite all of Injustice, which includes multiple universes. Now, the Superman 1 million uses another problem. That's Cal Kent, a descendant of Superman. Gold Superman, aka Superman Prime 1 million, would be the actual version you'd want to use here. For Injustice Superman, I do agree that he doesn't have a lot of speed feet, and that the few he does have aren't very quantifiable, despite being much faster than light. So, I agree that Goku could potentially defeat Injustice Superman, Obviously, he'd smack base in Justice Superman, 
but when you include the sword and orb of power amp, he was going to rewrite more than just multiple universes. He was going to rewrite the entire multiverse. He even referenced the Orrery of Worlds, the thing that contains infinite multiverses, and mentions that there is an infinite number of them. So you could argue that Goku really couldn't do anything to him, since the only reason the Superman even lost was because He-Man could control the orb better than he could, something Goku obviously wouldn't be able to do. All Supes has to do is use the anti-life equation on a multiversal scale, and Goku is caught within that range. In fact, most versions of Goku would fall prey to the anti-life equation. So just Superman dominates them until we get to the video game versions of Goku. Speed is a big problem, like I said. Many of his feats can't be quantified. But on the flip side, it shouldn't be relevant. Thanks to the durability provided by the amp. And like I said, he has multiversal range. So speed is actually irrelevant here. You see, Superboy Prime and Time Trapper are the same person. Time Trapper is just a future version of Superboy Prime. And by the way, Time Trapper was capable of erasing all possible futures in the multiverse. And that contains infinite universes. He is the very embodiment of the end of time. So why am I not using this guy instead of Superboy Prime? Well, it's because Superboy Prime defeated him. Superboy Prime's speed feats may not be that impressive, but his blessing power allows him to easily stomp Super Saiyan God Goku. Now it's interesting that you use that scan to scale Time Trapper, because the energy which was used for that event came from Silver Age Superman fighting. The thing to keep in mind about Prime is that he's Silver Age Superboy, and that's part of his huge power difference when it comes to him and post-crisis characters. At least until Superman leveled up before Flashpoint, but we'll get to the Theta State later. So you could easily argue that Silver Age Supes should be scaled higher. And as an example of the power difference, pre-Crisis Superboy was able to freely transverse time while post-Crisis could barely keep up. Now to be fair, this was early in post-Crisis' career, but you see my point. Also, like I said, thanks to the speed difference, Superman, from all three main continuities, Golden Age, pre- and post-Crisis, would allow them to easily outmaneuver Super Goku. Golden Age relies on speed and durability, whereas pre-Crisis has the edge in both speed and strength, he'd run through Goku no problem. And of course, Post-Crisis has his own share of infamous universal feats supported by speed and hacks that would allow him to win. Even if we grant that DBS Goku could beat Earth-2 Superman and Post-Crisis Superman, he'd have no chance against Silver Age Superman. Hard to say just how much stronger he got after the training. But at bare minimum, he did get 50 times stronger. Because as its original name implies, the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan transformation is a Super Saiyan God that has gone Super Saiyan. And they do confirm this in the Tournament of Power, and in the manga it's said to be over a 10 times multiplier. But that multiplier isn't enough to make Goku infinite multiversal. Ah, oh, everyone thought I was just going to defend Superman. Nope, just like last time I have some problems with the Dragon Ball scaling as well. Now, Goku did get 50 times stronger, but not just from God to Blue, that's a massive lowball. In the anime, he absorbed the power of SSJ G into his SSJ form. And when he fights Frieza, Krillin says that Goku is at the strongest he's ever seen him. That means his base form has gotten 50 times stronger, and that his transformations on top of that should increase as well. So the distinction matters because Goku's stats increase massively by giving his Battle of Gods feats to his base and then using multipliers from there. Only using 50 times God is basically what SSJ Goku would be in this arc. So you need to include the five forms after that. Naturally. Goku at the beginning of the Tournament of Power is a hundred times stronger than when he fought against Golden Frieza for the first time. Here's why. Golden Frieza is stronger than Super Saiyan God Blue. At the end of Dragon Ball Z, it is confirmed that when characters are dead and have a halo above their head, they're slightly stronger. And Goku was just as strong as Golden Ghost Frieza in his base form. But I can't agree with this at all. Goku in his base form has no chance against Golden Frieza even from Revival of F. I assume we were saying that they're comparable because Goku and Frieza are circling each other, while Frieza's golden and Goku's in base, but keep in mind that Goku had to go blue when they actually collided for a double KL. Not only that, guides to the top confirmed that Goku and Frieza were the same strength. If Goku was even with him in base, he wouldn't have transformed. I will agree that Prime slaps every version of Super Goku, including Vegito, God Isomas, and Gogeta. You can also accept that he'd lose the fusions to Goku. But when you include video games in this video, oh boy. Do Exoverse Goku. I mean Xenoverse Goku. Because X makes the Z sound. Xenoverse Goku was capable of fighting against Demigra, a being whose existence was beyond time and space, in a multiverse that contains infinite universes. 
Denigra was also a threat to all of the worlds. And that does include Speed's world, which is a world that views the Dragon Ball universes as completely fictional. Hero's Boo was also noted as being extra-dimensional. So first off, the universe is really tricky when it comes to scaling, because there are a lot of contradictions between the guides and the games. For instance, the guides state that Mira is beyond space and time, but within the game itself, Mira is defeated by the Time Patroller, who is only equal to Super Boo at that point in the story. High Boo Saga tier, sure, but beyond space and time, even granting that video game characters are stronger, that's a massive stretch. And when Demigrav is going to destroy time and space, he's going to do it from the Time Vault, and plan to survive it by escaping to somewhere outside of time and space. But that's just the Xenoverse games. It seems that you're confusing Xeno Goku with Xenoverse Goku. And to be fair, it gets confusing with all these overlapping ideas, characters, and games. So to be brief, Mira and Toa appear in Dragon Ball Online, both Xenoverse games, and in Heroes. Their feats are different in all of them, and I'm not 100% sure if they're meant to be taken as the same version in every iteration. But I also don't know a lot about the games, and I had to get some help with this section of the video. I do know that Xenoverse Goku and Xeno Goku are not the same. And furthermore, there are three different versions of Xeno Goku. Two of which are able to affect time itself simply by transforming the Super Saiyan 4. Now, I won't dismiss the scaling you gave Demigra in Heroes, because Xeno Goku did defeat him, and he did have those feats. I just want to acknowledge that while Xeno Goku can be scaled from Xenoverse Goku, they are not the same character. So the fact that Xenoverse Goku, even though he was amped by the Ryuken technique, was able to damage Mira when he was stated to be able to destroy possibly infinite universes while overloaded is significant. I will point out though that I think that Monk Heroes characters haven't shown the capability of multiverse level feats, and the same goes for the anime where they have zero destructive or even speed feats really. Xeno Goku, as everyone knows, directly scales the Demigra, who's going to destroy the hero's multiverse, which includes infinite timelines, even when it can be considered the real world, and he beat Demigra in his base form, SSJ at most. This is not including that he can further transform into SSJ4, or they can fuse to form Gogeta and Vegito, or that he's weaker than Capsule Corp Goku, who uses SSJ Blue, and can do the same thing with Fusion, as well as use Kaioken and Ultra Instinct, the latter of which surpasses Fusion in this continuity. They all also have a relevant speed, which is higher than the best you can get Prime to, which is immeasurable. So all busting power can be comparable, speed makes this not a fight. And the same argument can be applied to Injustice Soups with the Orb Amp, who didn't have enough control over the Orb Nave worlds to suggest he can beat any version of Heroes Goku. And naturally this includes Pre-Crisis Soups as well. Even in just SSJ3, Goku is able to beat Gravy, who is warping the multiverse simply by existing. Ultimately, I agree that Capscore Goku would be no match for Theta State Superman, and thus concludes my problems with the scaling presented in part 4. That's a part 5, so we can bring this video home. would definitely put Goku after a hundred years of training above Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta in his base form. And it's also heavily implied that Goku at the end of GT fused with the Dragon Balls, it's not 100% clear. Which might give him all the elemental abilities of the Dark Dragons, and the ability to grant wishes like Shenron. Now, in this video, you explain why you didn't use Super Doom, which I appreciate, but I think I have to address GT Goku again. So, to put his actual base form strength into perspective and not the low ball that you were using, his base form in just the Baby Saga was able to beat Gohan in his SSJ form. Gohan, who in the GT Perfect Files was stated to have never stopped trading, meaning that GT Goku beat a Gohan who was stronger than Ultimate Gohan from the Boo arc in just his base. That alone is over a 10 times increase from the Boo arc depending on how high you scale Gohan. In GT, Goku got dozens of times stronger multiple times. So time skip Goku with a hundred years of uninterrupted training would be an absolute monster. Also, him having the power of the evil dragons is impossible without copying their techniques because they have nothing to do with Shenlong. I do agree that Prime 1 million is hard to gauge, but you could potentially do some crazy scaling using Morrison's statement that he's the most powerful metahuman in history. Now that we've gone over my problems with parts 3, 4, and 5, I want to say that I hope I was able to change your mind on how you scale GT Goku in the main version of Superman. And now, Jar, I want to throw out some versions that I think would have made nice additions to your video series. Black Lantern Earth 2 Superman. He has all the powers of Earth 2 Superman, and he has the immortality granted by a Black Lantern ring, and the power to regenerate indefinitely, unless his ring is destroyed. That's how you can outlast Super Goku pretty easily due to having superior stamina, and since I don't think Goku would be able to destroy the ring, he wins. Fusions could probably outdo him though. We have Trendy Superman, who is a godly version of Superman in Earth Prime's rewritten history. He was a massively amped post-crisis Superman, 
and I think he would have made a nice addition to part 4. He had one third the power of Krona, a multiversal being. He was able to depower Cheetah casually, he can create his own doomsday, which is capable of killing him. He can self-resurrect, grant people powers, among many other amazing abilities. It's safe to say he would beat Super Goku, I think he moves to Xeno and Caps Corp Goku. Superman Prime, when amped by the energy of a guardian, was able to scare Mixie into sealing off the fifth dimension. Now, naturally, this doesn't mean that he could stomp him, since when he beat Mixie Pitalik, he was weakened. But Mixie sealing off the fifth dimension is notable because he's able to casually destroy it, so the only reason he'd seal it off would be out of fear of damage to himself and not fear to damage to his dimension. So I think he'd be able to stand a little bit better of a chance against Xenoverse Goku, but ultimately he would lose. And I think his unrefined fighting style definitely lends credence to that fact. I still think he might have a chance against Fusions, Goku, however, at least before they get to higher transformations and fusions within that game. Now, for Goku, I think you should have included the manga variations. You mentioned the Hakai, but that is a manga-exclusive ability, and there would have been a downside to it, which is running out of key, which a lot of people rarely mention. He's not as strong as his anime variation, so he would have lost to even Golden Age Superman. But again, he could have made part 3 or 4. Ultra Instinct could really get him up there, but I don't see him getting too high due to his low speed and busting power comparatively. I think New 52 Superman probably has a chance depending on how high you scale him, or how low you scale this Goku. They're probably the most comparable versions. And then there's the anime variations of Z Goku which were left out. I'm not sure why you didn't see the two as different characters, but you showed in the last video that even with just speed there's a major difference. This isn't even getting into the power differences, like Buddha Strand and Galaxy, or Goku surpassing Gohan and Gotenks with just SSJ. And I'll also mention here, I thought it was kind of weird how you scaled Battle of Gods Goku to the anime version of Z Goku. Even though Super follows the rules of the afterlife where you don't get to keep your body, which would directly contradict this feat, and thus it shouldn't be included. But, speaking of non-canon material, I think you should have used Movie 11 Gogeta, who can comfortably scale above Buu Saga characters. Movie 13 and 14 Goku, aka the versions of Super in movie form, should have also had a notable appearance, especially since SSJ G Goku is stronger than Vegito, but he's weaker than both versions of Super Goku, so I can kind of understand where you're coming from and excluding him. There also is the simple fact that he probably would have just made it into part 3, but again, it felt odd that they were left out. In addition, we can add all the versions of Bizarro that were left out, and all the versions of Ultraman. Even Cyborg Superman, debatably, should have been in the series. But again, they probably wouldn't change that much since they just scaled to their various versions of Superman, so I get it. I also won't hold it against you for not using versions that didn't exist when your video was made. And before we go, I want to talk about the dismissal of Blue Cheetah in the last video. I have some minor points. So for one, Broly not being able to kill Frieza can be explained away by two things. One, Frieza trained since the Tournament of Power, and thanks to his BS, he got incredibly strong. There are actually statements that support the idea that Frieza's power is increased after the Tournament. Two, it can also be plot-induced stupidity. So if we take actual scaling into account, and we assume he hasn't grown since the tournament, this feat is actually impossible on Frieza's part. And then on top of that, SSJ Broly isn't even Broly's max. He also has his legendary state, which is much stronger, and Gogeta still bodied him. Just saying. I'm not saying it's definitive that he's stronger than Jiren, but it's heavily debatable, at least from where I stand. And pretty much every single argument people brought up against me really didn't change anything about the list. But hey, just remember this, I don't think I'm the be-all end-all. So if you think I highballed a certain version of Goku or lowballed a certain version of Superman, you can make your own list. After this video, in the future, I am going to be doing an all versions of Goku versus all versions of Superman Part 6, where I'm going to do a comment comeback. Answering a few questions people have, maybe changing my mind on certain things. Well, I would be honored for you to address some of my points that I've made in both videos. Considering you already made a new video in the series, you might have already done it. I'll give it a watch, and hopefully I won't disagree with the info as much as I did here. As much fun as it was doing a ton of research on Superman, I do wish for my videos to come out a little bit faster. This one took forever, after all. But that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video. I know that it's a little different, and I didn't break down every individual argument like I tend to. But uh, parts 4 and 5 had a lot of group scaling, so once you debunk that, you kind of debunk the whole thing. That being said, it was fun to come up with these responses and these debunks, though editing is always a chore. Gotta get working on that live stream that I promise next. And I really appreciate everyone who watched this video. I apologize for the wait, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please feel free to let me know if you agree with me or Jar, and explain your reasoning in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're new, and as always, his video links will be in the description. 
the video link to part three will be in the description and any notable feats or scans will also be in the description alongside any respect threads I think go with this top and I really need to get working on another video so I'll see you all again soon. This has been Taff 108 signing out. Peace. Remember to keep GT strong.